there is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain.
just now standing there thinking, Jesus, the Father, made it all about you. And then when we came into the kingdom, now it's all about him. Amen. Amen? Amen? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He made it all about you so he could reconcile you to his heart. So now it can be all about him. Our lives revolve around. See, this is one thing we've got to watch out for, that selfishness. About, it's everything about me. No. He made it all about you, so now we can make it all about him. Amen. It's all about him. Amen? Amen? His guidance, his life in us, praise God. Working in us to make us Christ-like. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. Look at somebody and say, it's all about him. Glory be to God. Amen. And then you may be seated. And I'm really close to the camera now. I had to get my uh, iPod charged in this morning, or iPad, because it, uh, it was down to 9%. Well, that ain't a lot. 9% just don't last long. Can you say, well, don't say amen. Just say, well, man, well, I got really close to the camera just then. And got so close, I, like I was red. All right. Hallelujah. We're glad to have you. Praise the Lord. And uh, Jesus is Lord. Can everybody say Jesus is Lord? How often is he Lord? All the time. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. And so we're just so happy to see you today. Thankful to God that uh, the blessed God, uh, he has blessed us. He's empowered us to live in life of victory. Glory be to God. The life of faith is the life of victory. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You know, um, how many went outside this morning were shocked? Because I looked out, it was raining. I was expecting it to be cold. It was 64 degrees. I'm like, oh my goodness. But see, downtown, they still think it's raining. I mean, uh, freezing. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen. They think it's, uh, they think it's still uh, cold out there. Came in one of these rooms over here was like, you know, I started looking up. Where's the tobacco? They were curing the back end there. Oh, my, 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 my. Well, we're so happy to have you all out there on the Facebook world. And um, uh, just, we, isn't it good to love God? Isn't it good to be alive under God? Isn't it good to have the, the ability to live by faith and not by sight? Amen. Isn't it good that we, we have answers? Like Brother Hagee used to tell people, isn't it good we got inside information? Amen. You know, when, when, when the answers from the world are nay and nay and nay, we can go to God and the answer is yea. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got answers from heaven that do not have to be submitted to the world system. Glory to God. We made the world system submit to the answers from heaven. How do you know? Because 1 John 5, 4 says, This is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith didn't say could overcome it said that overcometh hallelujah if you haven't been with us on Wednesday nights you should be there is that right brother Dick oh my we're getting some good stuff amen what, what was it got to come and find out now uh, also coming up we're, we're still waiting to get some things uh, to in uh, we're going to begin in, in, a, in hopefully and, and my goal is at least by the first Wednesday night of March beginning a 10, at least 10 uh, week series on the authority of the believer. Now that will entail uh, the book, Brother Hagin's book, The Believer's Authority Legacy Edition. That will in, also count on the, the authority of the believer uh, study guide. Also will include two tape series, The Believer's Authority and Reigning in Life as a King. Hallelujah. Excuse me. You know, I say tape. And they were originally taped. And then they were transferred to CD. Then they've been transferred to MP3. Okay? All right? Uh, so, I, I mean, I've got, all, I've got all those series on a digital thing in my house. And all, every once in a while, they'll, they'll go, please turn the tape over to hear side two. <laughs> you know? And you want, you're going, where is it? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, um, but... That's that, and we, we did say this. If you want to have an individual study guide for your spouse or someone else in the household, you'll buy that. We're providing one copy of each. Okay, 
Um, you, and what this is, it is, a, it is a Bible study. That means you're going to have homework. Yeah, homework. Well, let's, let's make it sound cool. In between service work. Praise the Lord. Those of you watching my internet, uh, you, can, you can get those materials yourself. And uh, be, join along, go with us as we go through this series and teaching. So that's, like we said, our goal is to have this going by the first week of March. Kind of was shooting for the middle of February. Well, guess what? It is the middle of February, and, and we just haven't gotten out. We, we had some stuff back where we hadn't got it all in yet. We can't really get started until we get everything together. So um, praise the Lord for that. You know, not the back order, but we're, it's coming. Ellie ordered hers online to get her extra copy already, so. And got it. Why didn't you order what she did? Because we get a discount ordering from where we ordered from for the church. And they're back ordered. And it saves us a lot of money since we're giving everybody a copy. So, we're, you know, we're trying to be wise stewards. Okay? All righty. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, all you husbands and wives, you be a blessing to each other this week. It is Valentine's Day coming up this week. And, of course, Wednesday night is Valentine's Day, so come to church anyway. We'll bless you. You can go home and, you know, go out another night. Who wants to go out on Valentine's Day? I don't. I, I, I've been there, done that. Fighting all them people. We can go on the night before and, and, and just be in love the next night. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I had to fight 50,000 people. Amen. I can send, we can get flowers and candy on Valentine's Day and eat dinner another night. I, it's like Mother's Day. We'll celebrate the honey on Saturday. You know, on Sunday? We used to go, we used, years ago, we'd go to O'Brien's. They'd have a five-hour wait. No. No. It's McDonald's. I'll take you tomorrow. No, no. You, you go anywhere you want to go on Father's Day. Hallelujah. Praise God. I remember working at Parker's in Greenville. Mother's Day and East Carolina graduation would fall on the same day all the time. You couldn't cook enough food. Then people coming in there, I mean, you cook 3,000 chickens and 36 pigs in one day and sell them and run out. Oh, yeah. Mama was eating some fried chicken. That's Eastern Carolina food. We don't, you know, didn't want no fancy steak. Went fried yard butter. Amen. I'm just, all right, praise God. All right, if you need offer, it's time to receive our offering. Bring an envelope, raise your hand. The ushers are now to assist you right now. Uh, otherwise, if you're giving electronically, go ahead and ring that bad baby up. Praise God. Hallelujah. We love, we love the Lord. We love giving. Amen. Hallelujah. And our tithe and offering is to honor Him. Amen. With the first fruits of our increase. Praise God. And then just special offerings to say, I love you, Jesus. Dear Father, we thank you for the tithe. Thank you for the offering. We thank you that the people are blessed. Thank you that it's brought into the storehouse of God. Heaven's windows are open, and you empty out on us blessings. We don't have room enough to receive in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Go ahead, I should receive that. Praise God. As I said, if you're giving electronically, you can go ahead and send that through PayPal or um, Square Cash. Either one. Um, glory to God. I don't know. We got some, one person uses PayPal occasionally. Um, I don't, we don't have that much going that way, but, you know, it, it's available. It's there. Those of you watching online, donations at fbc.org is our PayPal. Um, and the uh, square cash is out there. Is that what you're telling me? You put both of them out there. Okay. My, I didn't see it show up. All right. So, praise the Lord. All right, Children's Church Preschool, you guys are missed. Amen. Hallelujah. I may never march in the infantry. You know, I, I forgot. Have you, you seen that song? I may never in the infantry, shoot I at the enemy, shoot the artillery, and I may never zoom over the enemy. Right, whatever, zoom over the enemy, and I'm in the Lord's army. Fly over the enemy, all right. They didn't have, they, I guess shooting the artillery would be the Navy sea battle stuff, possibly. All right, praise God. Go ahead and open your Bibles. Um, we are, I'm sorry, I just, I, I just got, well, I just don't like to wear the coat. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Talking about the blood of Jesus, can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And uh, 1 Peter 1, 14 through 19, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so you be holy in all manner of conversation. Now remember the King Jimmy word conversation. 
It is an old Elizabethan term that was, you know, it, it didn't mean talking to one another. It meant your manner of life, how you live, lifestyle, all right, and all manner of your lifestyle. Because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. Now, folks, we shouldn't have to spend a lot of time there. You shouldn't be going around telling people you can live any way you want to and it's okay when God says, be holy even as I am holy. Amen. Now, we're not asking you to be holy in your ability to live out of the life that's in you. But the grace of God does not make you live holy. If it did, then Paul wouldn't write, as it is written, be holy for I am holy. Wouldn't tell them, or Peter, wouldn't tell them to be, to be holy in all manner of life. Glory to God. It would just say, because you're under grace, you're going to live holy. Hello? No. Now, we're not saying, you know, if you do this, this, this out of your efforts, then you're going to be holy. No, you're to live out of what's in you. But you still have to live out of it. Okay? And I shouldn't, I don't want to go around, 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 around the circle on, on, on dealing with that. But, you know, people, people have narratives that are so messed up. They act like the, well, of course, then they say Peter and James didn't agree with Paul, so they're not really canon. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was the best one I've heard so far. You know, basically, if you don't, if the part of the Bible doesn't agree with what you want to teach, then it's not, it's not Bible. Do you remember uh, he that adds to or takes from this book, let him curse, be a curse of death meal? Yeah, that one. All right. And if you call on the Father without respect to persons, judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain lifestyle, received by the tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Thank God for the blood of Christ. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're so grateful to God that, you know, as I said, it's not our ability and not our strength our doing it's the work that's working in us hallelujah and so we trust in that work and we, we we cooperate with it we live out of that praise god we do it amen but it, they overcame revelation 12 says they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony praise god hallelujah see there are two things there there's the blood and then there are the word of our testimony with we're, we're confessing we're declaring we're walking in the light of what we say praise god be doers of the word, not hearers only. For he that only heareth the word is like a man who and, and doeth not. He is like a man who beholds his face in the mirror. When he walks away straight, he forgetteth what manner of man he is. Amen? Amen? But he who hears the word and continueth therein. Glory to God. Are you here? I actually said be doers and hear, deceiving. Your, you're deceived if you hear it and don't do it. Amen? Hallelujah. And then next verse, 24, and um, 24. my brain works faster than the computer. For he beholds himself, goeth his way straight manner, forgetteth what manner man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of what? Liberty. Now, I'm going to stop here because I've heard people all kind of come up with all kinds of things about liberty. I'm free. No, no, no. It is the law of liberty to live free from the course of this world, from the spirit of disobedience, that, that, I mean, from the spirit of this world that now worketh in the children of disobedience. It is the liberation from Satan's domain and Satan's authority in our life. That law of liberty, hallelujah, if the Son has set you free, you are free indeed. Free what? Free to do anything I want to? No. Free to be in union with God. Free to walk with God. Free to walk in by faith. Free to live above the fray of this world. Free to live by faith and not by sight. Free to be the head and not the tail. To free to be above only and not beneath. Free, free, free from Satan constraint and to live under the law and the, the rule of heaven in your life. Glory to God. That as Deuteronomy says, that you can have days of heaven on the earth. That's what I'm free to do. I'm not free to go around and have sex with anybody I want to have sex with. I'm not free to do anything I want to do to my body. I'm not free to just to live in sin all the time and still go to heaven. That's not what the law of liberty came for. It came to set me free from that garbage. Amen. Amen. It came to deliberate me from that garbage. And now I live in the perfect law of liberty. Amen. It is a law. 
You live in the law of liberty, you live in blessing. You live in union with the Father. You live in a whole, as, as, as uh, Paul wrote to the church, and it says, uh, you know, uh, um, live in newness of life. One translation says, in a whole new sphere, all together. It raised us up out of the constraint and the power of this world system that is governed by the God of this world, Satan, and set us into and established us in that new sphere of the law of liberty, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that has set me free from the law of sin and death. Why would you want to serve a law that brings death and destruction when you can live in a law that brings life and liberty? Why are we trying to convince people it's okay to live in sin, which is the law of sin and death, and promise them the results of the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus? Think on it for a little while. Chew on that. Instead of chewing on Copenhagen, chew on some Jesus. Amen? I do chew on Copeland Hagen. Amen? Not on Copenhagen. Amen? Glory to God. Or Mama Rose's snuff. Either either one. I don't do any of that. He's working the back of them women here. They're running down there. Go over here. And could spit it 20 feet. Yes, sir. Pull a knife out on you, too. Okay. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and what? Continueth. Do not come to Jesus and look into the perfect law of liberty and say, now that I'm saved, I can go back and live in the law of sin and death. Why would you want to? It brings destruction. It brings, you know, it brings defeat. It keeps you from walking in the fullness of who you're designed to be. It keeps you in the flesh. We are the circumcision which worships God in the spirit and place no confidence in the flesh. Your flesh keeps you in a mess. But there is a law called the law of liberty. And I continue there with him being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, not word, work. You do what the perfect law of liberty says. He, this man, this man, shall be blessed in his deed. What do we get there? The blood of Christ washes us. The blood of Christ redeems us. Are you here? We have been justified by his blood. We've been declared righteous by his blood. What? Colossians says that he translated us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. How do we get translated? We got justified. We got declared redeemed. Amen. We were declared by victory, by the treaty of Jesus between God and the man Christ Jesus. And we joined forces and we became partakers of that reconciliation. Glory to God. Our citizenship changed. We laid down the banner of Satan's kingdom, and we took up the banner of Jehovah Nisi, the banner of victory. The blood of Jesus washed over us, glory to God, and declared us to be in right, to be righteous or in right relationship with God the Father by the precious blood of Christ. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. And we came out of that place. And though our garments were as filthy rags, I've taken off the clothes of my righteousness. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. Amen? But, glory to God. Five Romans five nine. You don't you don't have to run away from me. I'm still working there. Okay. Romans five eight. But God commendeth His love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified. What's that? Declared righteous by 
his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. Oh, glory to God. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. I said, thank God for the blood of Jesus. We were brought out of defeat. We were brought into victory. And he says here that when we continue in that perfect law of liberty, that we're not forgetful here as we're to the work, this man shall be what? Blessed in his deed. Blessed in his deed. How many want to be blessed? Don't think that he, he didn't come. I, I, he didn't come. So you continue like you were. Like you were takes you to hell. Takes you where it is alienated from him. Like you were is separated from him. And the laws that work in that other kingdom bring death and destruction. But the laws of the kingdom of God bring blessing and life, plenty and health, and most importantly, intimacy, relationship, and unity with God. What did Jesus pray in that great intercessory prayer over in John 17? That they may be like us, Father, I and thee and thou and me, that they may be one in us. We can be brought into harmony with God. Where our life is now hid with God in Christ. And the life we now live, we live by the faith of the Son of God who died for us. Can you say amen? Well, how does this take place? Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Glory to God. Chapter 5. Therefore, what, we've been, what, justified by his blood. We've been declared righteous by his blood. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Now, we have to understand man is a spirit, possesses a soul, lives in a body. Verse Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 says, um, I pray God that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus. Three different Greek words. We've done this before, but, you know, just for the sake of those who may not have heard it. Spirit, pneuma, soul, suke, body, soma. Man's three parts. The thing is, because that we lived. Now, remember what, what Paul wrote to the church at Galatia? The works of the flesh are? List all the stuff there. I mean, you know, and that he gets in such like. In other words, that's not a full thing. That's just a, a partial list of what the works of the flesh are. That's how we all live before Christ. Let me say this. That's how a lot of people live after Christ. Because they don't learn how to live out of their spirit. When man fell, he became a flesh-dominated, flesh-ruled being. Separated from the life of God. No longer living out of his spirit, living out of his flesh. Taking pleasure in the works of the flesh and the desires of the flesh and the dictates. We got scriptures that can back this up. Man wanted to live out of whatever he wanted to live unconstrained. That's what we're seeing out in America today. We hear all this stuff about tolerance and acceptance and equality. And we're not, no, they ain't talking about equality in the way you think about it. What they're talking about is if everybody's got to live however they want to live in whatever manner they want to live, and you got to put up with it, and you got to like it. So when the homosexual shows up at your church and demands you marry them, you got to do it because even if you don't like it, it don't matter. You got to do it. That's what we demand equality. You've got to accept it. Well, God, then I don't accept it. I don't care what you, I'm not going to accept it. And I'm not going to marry you. I don't care. You can show up here with a quarter. I'm not going to do it. It's an abomination before God. I'm not going to do it. You're living out of your flesh. You're living out of the desires of your flesh, the lust of your flesh. Now, I'll love you, and I'll teach you, I'll teach you how to get free. Amen. Yeah, do that too. But we got Christians who come into the kingdom of God, and no one ever tells them, teaches them how to live out of their pneuma. 
They don't teach them to renew their mind to the Word of God. We take real watered down, Mickey Mouse, little aspects of stuff and make it so that you can live like you want to live and still come to our church and tithe. Because when, whenever sin gets involved and whenever compromise gets involved, start looking for where the money trail is. We're going to get lots of back ends in the seats and we're going to have lots of money because we don't make anybody feel bad. Now, Jesus forgave, but he told them not to sin either. Go and sin no more. I forgive you, but don't go and sin no more. Don't, don't, keep, li don't keep living in sin. The liberation is not so you can remain like you were. It's not to expunge your account and then you just keep living the way you were. God wants to expunge, expunge your record so you can live the way he designed you to live in the perfect law of liberty. And so he says here in 2 Corinthians, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away and all things became new. What? <clears throat> that spirit man's record got expunged of his relationship with Satan, of his joining with Satan, of his being in harmony with Satan, and he was brought into a new place. He got a new identity. He went into the witness protection program. That one old man doesn't exist anymore. Now, there are people out there who remember that old man, but he doesn't exist anymore. Hello? He's a completely different identity. Completely different set of people that they're connected with. Hello? Now, what happens? you got to change how you think. So when we get born again, we got to start beginning to live in the perfect law of liberty. Let the engrafted word of God save our suitcase, our souls. Change the way we think. We can't think about living in the flesh. We begin to think about because we've been made new creatures, living out of the life of God in our spirits and not out of the weakness of our flesh. Paul buffeted his body. He kept it under. Amen? We're to put off the old man and put on the new man. Are you here? We've been created in Christ. Your flesh didn't get born again. And see, if somebody from the past runs into somebody from the witness protection program, unless they get plastic surgery, they still look the same. Hello. Are you here? You're going home. I mean, oh, that's, that's, I know them. That's, 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 you know. They come up to you and say, Who, aren't you so? No, I'm not, I'm not so so. See, the devil's always trying to get you reminded of who you were. And then he's got preachers coming along telling you, you can, you can still live like who you were. And you still get to go to heaven. Why do we keep getting it so that people can live the lowest and make heaven when he offered us the high life? When he offered us a life of victory? When he offered us a life of overcoming? When he offered us a life of living in the spirit, glory to God? When he offered us a life of living in harmony with the Father, glory to God? Why are we trying to convince people it's okay to live in the lowest and still get in all the blessings? Don't feel bad that you sin. It's all right. God don't care. It robs you. It's not living like who I am. It's teaching me to live like who I was. You're robbing people when you teach people that stuff. You're robbing them of the opportunity to live above. You're robbing them of the opportunity to walk in the spirit and to walk in spiritual things, to walk in that realm where God walks. Instead of having him to come down and rescue you every 30 seconds because you're just living in the flesh. And he's going to drag you into heaven, kicking and screaming because you want to cater to the flesh because I want to do whatever my flesh wants to do and still make heaven. I'm a new creature. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. One translation said one time, a new species of being that never existed before. That new man didn't exist before. A brand new man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you here? Old, uh, all thing, all things, old things passed away. What, oh, the man, the spirit man. All things have become new. Verse 18, and all things are of God. He's talking about your spirit. Your spirit comes alive to God. He wasn't before. Separated. But the washing and the regeneration by the blood of Jesus, glory to God in your life, has made you a new man. 
who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, given us the ministry of reconciliation. What did he do? He brought you out to give you a ministry, to give you a purpose, to give you a calling, to go bring others out, to go snatch others from that place, to go deliver others from that situation, to bring them into the land that flows with milk and honey, glory to God. The land of blessing. Hallelujah. Blessed be God forever. To know that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and committed unto us the word of reconciliation. What does it mean not committing, uh, not um, imputing their trespasses unto them? There's a stay on the world's trespasses. Man, if we were getting judged, we wouldn't have made it to Jesus if God's judgment came on the world because of their connection with the Satan. It's coming. I said it's coming. And what God is going to do, he's going to bring judgment on Satan and whoever is still in him. You're of your father, the devil, and the love of your father, you fulfill, John, Jesus said in John 8, 44. What did he mean? Those who are not born again are connected to Satan. And when God's wrath comes on Satan in the final judgment, those that are connected with him are going to receive that judgment. He was, he's not imputing trespasses. In other words, he's not holding the world accountable now. He's staying the judgment and giving them the opportunity to come out of that through Jesus Christ. The opportunity has been presented. It's there for the taking. Any time, any day, any hour, any moment, you can receive that. If you're not born again, you can receive of that and be born again and come out of the connection with Satan, be translated out of his kingdom, and I mean, out of his authority into the kingdom of God's dear son through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God, for he hath made him sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Remember, we were, made, we were declared righteous or justified by his blood. That precious blood of Jesus has delivered you. That precious blood of Jesus has brought you out. That precious blood of Jesus has brought you into the things and blessings of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it brought, let me, let me say this. Now, sometimes in church, and I grew up, I grew up class, classical Pentecostal. I was, in a, I was in a Pentecostal holiness church. Grew up classical Pentecostal. I mean the holy rollers. We were caught all kinds of stuff. I mean the beehive hairdos, burlap sacks, dust and powder, and the clear lips, clear shiny lipstick. Now, I don't know who came up with that idea. Are you here? You know, they took that passage of Scripture about women adorning themselves and that kind of stuff. And so we tried to make them look more like dead than we could. I mean, we, listen, are you here? We had the walking dead before till, uh, AMC did. You come to church and that hair be up in here and it, it was so gray and yellow. Y'all remember that? I mean, bobby pins all in it because you couldn't cut your hair. And they wear them, you know, I call them like burlap sack clothes, you know. I mean, just homely. Y'all here, you go home. And they, Now, listen, it was a white church, okay? Now, I don't know if they did this in the African-American Pentecostal church, but in the white church, they take that white dusting powder and put it on the face. Bath powder or whatever. I mean, they really look... You're talking about honkified. <laughs> Dear Lord. I mean, it was like, you go buy paper, it's like 87% you know, white brightness, you know, 90% white brightness. They was 120% white brightness. I mean, they was honky. And then they come back and put that clear lip gloss on. Them lips look like they stuck out a mile. And they get this shaking and, 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 and under the, you know, in a service, and bobby pins go flying all over the room. <laughs> we have to wear safety goggles at church. Bing, 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 bing. Yeah. Oh, my. See, we thought, and, and, and we thought, man, if we did all this stuff on the outside, that made us holy. And so, 
we have to come teach. It's not how your flesh looks. It's how you're living and where you're living from. We spent so much time trying to teach people how to look holy. We didn't teach them how to live holy. Because it ain't going to be the dust and powder. And I'm going to tell you, some of them folks needed some lipstick and some rouge. They put some old paint on that old barn, Brother Hagin used to say. Old barn needs a new fresh coat of paint every once in a while. And then, you know, men don't wrinkle, they get character lines. Okay? Hallelujah. But we spent so much time trying to be, you know, look like something, but on the inside, we weren't living out of it. You go to church looking like that, and you go sit, like Brother Hagin used to say, sit in the living room and lick a spoon in the kitchen. Long tongue, talk a lot. Say all kinds of stuff you shouldn't be saying. Talk about folk. Hello? Are you here? You're going home. Live in unbelief. Living out of the flesh. I'll tell you how many times I've been to church and they're fighting over who wore what dress. They saw me buy that and went and bought it so they could wear it too. And they're all in there for a show. And they, and they wonder why they ain't getting nothing done for the kingdom. You've been made the righteousness of God. You've been brought in the right relationship with God. We need to live from a different place. Are you here? You go home. There's a life in us. Resurrection life. Raising life. Delivering life. Where to live from. And it's not how well we, we cover the flesh to look like something. It's how much we live out of that life that God imparted into us at the new birth. When we became new creatures in Christ. I now live from that life. Yeah, I keep my flesh constrained. Why? Because it, when, when my flesh gets out of hand, it's not representing the life I live from. And it will lead me to a law that I was delivered from. So I don't tell my flesh no just so I can, make, so I can get to heaven. My flesh gets told no because I don't want to live out of the law that brings destruction. My desire is to live in the law that brings life and liberty and peace and strength, and victory. Amen. When my flesh is told no, when my flesh is constrained, when my flesh doesn't get its way, I'm not doing works that's going to get me into heaven and going to get me blessed. I'm saying you can't go live there anymore. We don't live there anymore. That's not where we're going to hang out. Because there's nothing but destruction and misery and death over there. I'm going to hang out over here where I get days of heaven on the earth. Where the blessings of God come on me. Where the power of God's at work in me. Where I live in blessing and freedom and power. Glory to God. So no flesh, you can't go do that. And I'm not going to sit here and teach you where well, you can go live there and still get blessed. <coughs> That's just not scriptural. Now, you can go do some stuff and get mercy, but you can't live like that and expect mercy all the time. You can't practice sin and expect the blessing. It doesn't mean God doesn't love you. It doesn't mean that God won't restore you. It doesn't mean God's not striving with you, trying to get you to live in that different place. It does mean you're robbing yourself of what he has for you. That's what, that's what angers me. I do get angry about the people teaching narratives that, so that people won't feel bad about living in their flesh. There's no condemnation. Blood of our heart condemn us not. Then we have confidence toward God. God don't have to condemn you. Your own heart will. And what's it condemning you for? You're, it's your heart saying you're robbing me. You're cheating me. You're holding me out of what God has for me. Well, he hadn't rejected you. He hadn't kicked you to the curb. Da, 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 you still get to go to heaven. That's not the point. 
The point is you're being robbed of living in the life of victory that he's provided for you by living in the flesh. When you've been made a new creature, your heart's going, stop it. You're keeping us out of that new sphere. You're keeping us out of that place of victory. You're keeping us out of that place of living in the law, the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus. Just so we can cater to the flesh who wants to go back and partake of the law of sin and death. With the liberty, you still get to go to heaven. And your heart knows that there's pleasure in sin for a season. But how many remember that song from the 70s? If you're going to dance to the music. Amen? What is it? You got, that's this old saying, old paper. there's a song that kind of went on along that line, you know, back in the 70s about dancing to the music, you know. Basically, you're going to have to pay up. You're going to have to ante up. You keep living in the flesh, and you're going to ante up one day. And it's not going to be the life of victory you want. It's not going to be the life of victory people have been telling you you're going to get. God's saying, listen, I've made you a new creature. You've been declared righteous. That new man on the inside is now reconciled to me. And there's a now a new law called the law of liberty that you can live in. And if you'll stay in there, you'll be blessed in your deed. Amen. All because of the work of the blood. Now, listen, you understand, the work of the blood, the faith in God, doing, you know, I get it. But it is the work, that, that work of the blood of Jesus in our life that cleanses us, that makes us a new man, glory to God. Being born again, not a corruptible seed, incorruptible, the word of God. We got the word working in us, the blood working in us, but it's because of the power of the blood that undergirds and sustains and ratifies all of that. We were declared righteous by his blood. And I got a new place to live. And I don't want to live. Are you here? I don't want to. I think it's one of the biggest injustices we can ever do. Now, to take a baby Christian and tell them, because you're under grace, you can live any way you want to live. And they, don't, they won't come right out and say, you can live any way you want to live. Well, some do. I can fornicate and do this, do that, and I'm still saved. I'm still blessed. I'm gonna, I don't even have to give. I'm blessed. We're robbing them of the work of repentance, of changing and going in a different direction. But what is that? It's not you simply change and start doing something different. Repentance is when you come to God through Christ Jesus and accept him as Lord, and you're born again, and now you make a turn. You're no longer living in the flesh. You live in the spirit. And that turn is the path to blessing. That turn, what? Walking in the Spirit. Amen? Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. God's called us to go over Romans 6, 7, 8. You guys have a great set of scriptures in there. Amen. When you walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. What does it mean walk in the Spirit? When you're living out of the law, of the law, Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, that perfect law of liberty, and can, you're continuing there. If you weren't here with us Wednesday night, we got talking about Mark 11, 23, 22 and 23, where how, you know, Jesus said, Who shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that things which he saith shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he saith? Well, in the Greek, the, 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 the words for uh, shall say and shall uh, believe, are active, shall not doubt is passive. See, when you're, when you're so actively saying what the Word says and believing what the Word says, you don't have to go around not doubting. When you get so full of faith, it pushes doubt out. That's passive. If you're actively being filled with faith, speak, actively speaking what the Word says, you're filling yourself up until you're fully persuaded, doubt gets pushed out. We're not spending all of our time trying not to doubt. We're spending our time feeding and building faith so that we're actually full of faith, fully persuaded. And doubt just gets pushed out. Now, if there's doubt in your heart, then you haven't got enough faith in there to push it out. And what we do a lot of times is we get focusing on the unbelief part. Hello? And that we, we reverse it. Now, doubt becomes active and faith becomes passive. And if you get full of enough doubt, you'll push faith out. Yeah. 
So we need to be saying and believing. You don't have to sit there, I don't doubt, I don't doubt, I don't doubt. The phrase in the Greek is not active, it's passive. So I'm not, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick. No, nope. I believe that I receive my healing in Jesus' name according to 1 Peter 2, 24. What? I'm, I'm actively believing. I'm actively speaking. I'm actively declaring that I'm a new man in Christ. And now I, I'm not going around all the time, you know, uh, I, I, man, man, if I don't do this today, then I'm going to be good, good with God. I'm not spending all my time trying not to do what displeases God. I'm pursuing doing that which pleases God. And if I do that actively and consistently, I push that which doesn't please him out. But I can't keep in the back of my mind, hey, it's okay if I do it, God don't care. Because now you're going to actively pursue the flesh and you're going to push pleasing him out. Hello? Hello? And then your heart's going to condemn you because it's not walking in that harmony with the Father. Hello? If our heart condemns us not, we know that whatever we ask, we shall receive. If our heart condemns us not. Y'all here, you're going home. Three of you here? Anybody else gone home? I saw somebody go home. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Praise God. Well, let's, let's wrap that up right here. We'll just stop right here today. Anybody get blessed out of this? Yeah. Now, I got blessed. Yeah. only thing I wish I had is I wish I had a, mar a board behind me so I could write. I, I've got where I really like to write. <laughs> we are going to believe God. We got projectors, but I want to I want to get where um, I can get one of those those uh, pads that hooks up to, to a projector that you can write on. So I don't have to turn around and write on the board. I can write it right on this, you know, and uh, then it shows up behind me. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Or, you know, document cameras work, but they're, they're the kind of thing where you have to write on a piece of paper and move it around. And all that. If I had the whiteboard thing where I could just write on it and put notes in it and then write around them and all that kind of stuff, that would really be cool. Well, I want to do that. Amen. I and mean, we could even use this to do it with. Hallelujah. But, uh, you know, where we can teach. When, it's, when we want to teach something or get something for it down, when you can see it, glory to God. I don't know how much. That don't cost that much. They, co they cost a little bit, but we can get her done. Amen. Hallelujah. Because there's so many things so important. I like to preach, but you know, sometimes you've got to teach, and see, teach is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Well, uh, thank you all for being with us today. Those of you watching by Facebook, praise God. We, we love you. God bless you. Re walk in the Spirit. You will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk with God. Live out of that life that's been imparted to you, being justified, being declared righteous by His blood. And now we can live in the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus that sets us free from the law of sin and death. Live in victory. Live by faith. Walk with God. Have a blessed week. Till we meet again, remember this. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. See you next time. God bless you.